Hello kiddies, this is your Captain Ween speaking. I'm using my time in ISO to learn how to edit videos using a program called PowerDirector. Today I'm going to edit a video of flying my 1956 Cessna 180 from the Basque Coast over to La Trobe Valley. Just so everybody doesn't get upset, the footage you're seeing today was taken pre-COVID lockdown days. And if you believe in that, you believe in the Tooth Fairy. The things I'm going to try in today's edit is how to do voiceovers and how to use the audio mixing desk. And I might also fast forward some of the more mundane parts of the flight. So sit back and relax and enjoy this video. Just off the starboard side of my plane there is the township of Merbu North and the famous Grand Ridge Brewery and the Grand Ridge Road which is fantastic for cycling. So it's hard to know exactly where without Av plan in front of me, but uh, towards the end of the ranges here is the 10 mile call uh, for La Trobe Valley. So I put the radio on 126.0 for the local CTAF and the 10 mile call would be something along the lines of La Trobe Valley traffic, Romeo Golf Charlie is 10 nautical miles to the southwest at 2,500 feet on descent to circuit height with an ETA at the circuit of and then whatever the time is to reach the circuit. Um, so it's at about this point that you would make that radio call and start to build up awareness about any other traffic that might be in the pattern. I'll let this plane normal speed because just to the port side of my plane there is the Morwell open cut mine and then on the starboard side is the Hazelwood cooling pond so they were significant uh, landmarks of the Latrobe Valley uh, power uh, plantation. Uh, a lot of Victoria's power came from burning brown coal in the, in the Latrobe Valley so um, it might be interesting to some viewers so I'll just let this play for a while. At this stage there's usually some really rank singing going on inside the cockpit so it's a very good thing that I often fly alone because it's uh, not fair that passengers should have to endure that. At the five mile mark you should have a good idea as to how you're going to join the circuit. If not you can always overfly and have a look at the windsock but I always keep an eye on uh, applications like Willy Weather or Windy and also have a look at the local METAR for the aerodrome. So on this day I knew that the wind was favouring runway 27 and that it would be an oblique downwind join. So if there's a lot of uh, traffic in the circuit you can give a five mile or a three mile uh, radio call. On this day I didn't because I knew that I was the only uh, plane entering the circuit so I just uh, flew and made a, a call as I was joining an oblique downwind. I'm starting to look straight down runway 03 at Latrobe Valley and I know that because I'm pretty experienced with this aerodrome but 
At this point in time, I'll start to configure the plane to enter the circuit, which for the Cessna 180, I find 20 inches of manifold pressure and about 2100 RPM works well. And you just trim the nose back so that you uh, uh, maintain altitude and that will naturally start to bleed off some airspeed. So I'll still be doing probably 120, 125 knots at this point in time. And you've got to get that back to about 80 to start to bring in some stages of flap. So here I am joining an oblique downwind uh, leg for runway 27 um, and once I'm a beam the keys I will bring the manifold pressure back to about 15 inches continue to trim the nose so uh, that the airspeed washes off so that I'm uh, at about 80 knots by the time I'm turning base. Um, starting to turn base, I'll make a radio call, um, also bring the manifold pressure back to about 12 inches, continue to trim the nose back uh, so you're about 70 knots on base, um, and towards the, the end of your base leg, uh, I'll look to bring in a third stage of flap if I need it. So turning on to final at this stage, uh, I put my prop to full fine in case of a go around and I'm really just looking for a stabilised approach. So that's a, uh, a, an airspeed trim to about 65 knots uh, on final and then over the fence I like to get it back to about 60 knots. Uh, generally I only ever land with three stages of flap um, which is enough. Uh, I don't uh, tend to go to the 40 degrees unless it's a real short field landing which um, there's no need to do on a runway like this at La Trobe Valley. So this is a gravel runway, um, which is, I think, fantastic for the tail draggers to land on. Um, I think grass, gravel, and then uh, bitumen would be the, the favour. So um, here we are flying it right down to the keys, flying it all the way into ground effect, uh, resisting the temptation to pull back on the stick too much and just... Um, you know, really, really trying to judge when to when to flare for that three pointer. So, on this day, I had a tiny little bounce on the on the gravel pavement there. But I think the absolute key with tail draggers is just keeping them straight. And uh, if you do that, like I did uh, on this instance, there's no issues. So, pop the cow flaps open because uh, the engine heats up pretty quickly once you're on the ground. Um, and here I am backtracking runway two seven at La Trobe Valley after a pretty smooth touchdown. So. I hope you've enjoyed this video um, and we'll catch you again soon. Bye bye.